Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 20, and today we're talking about more effects, and those are going to be the plate reverb and the delay. So as always, let's go to a new preset. Let's right-click the display, go to init preset, and then take out number two and three out of the mix. So we have one oscillator going, increase our cutoff just a little bit like this, and then bring our volume down so we don't hurt our ears. So we have something kind of like this. Okay, so over here in the effects panel, let's select where it says chorus one and let's go to plate one. So this reverb here. So let's take a listen to it dry without the reverb. And let's take a listen with it. All right, so the reverb, I think, in Diva sounds very good, and it's kind of nice because there's a few controls. It's not too overwhelming, but it's just enough controls to make something really sound good. So we have five here on the bottom and two at the top here. So dry and wet is the easiest way to describe these here. You have more of your dry, dry signal over here and then more of your wet signal over here. So the unprocessed signal before it hits the reverb is going to be this dry one, and then the wet signal that gets processed from the reverb is the wet, and you can kind of mix these two taste if you want more of the process signal or more of the dry signal. That's totally up to you and how you mix these two knobs. So the actual controls here, so the first thing that we're going to see here is called pre-delay. So pre-delay is basically a delay before we start to hear the reverb. Now when it's all the way down like this, we just instantaneously hear reverb. It's kind of just there. And if you notice here in the spectrum view, let's turn this off. And something like this, you notice in between these yellow lines, it's a solid black in between these notes. Now when you turn the reverb on, it's going to be almost a little bit of a purple, and that's going to be the visual representation of that reverb. This stuff down over here, in between those notes. So basically, if we had this reverb or this pre-delay and we turn this all the way to the top, we're going to hear our dry signal, and then for a little bit of time, then we're going to start hearing the reverb. So yeah, so this is kind of a way where if you want the beginning of your sound to not be drowned out by the reverb, you'd may you'd want to reach for the pre-delay knob and kind of just hone that into taste, right? Okay, so moving on from there, next up we have diffusion. Now, this changes the reverb to sound a little bit less metallic. So a nice demonstration of this, right now it's fully to the top, so it doesn't really necessarily sound too metallic. Now, if we drag this all the way to the left, it's going to kind of sound like that. So... For the first AB, this is all the way to the right, so fully diffused. Now all the way to the left. Let's bring up our cutoff too as well as to get those high frequencies in there. So it sounds like reverb. We know that there's reverb there, but it kind of sounds weird, maybe a little cheesy, I guess, if there's no diffusion on there. And our ears start to make out those individual delays, really. So once we turn this all the way to the right, it really starts to sound like actual reverb, kind of nice reverb at that as well. So next up here, we have damp, so the short for dampening. And now this basically controls that the higher frequencies are going to decay a little bit faster than the lower frequencies. So all the way to the top here. And we can even see it here in the tail, right? So let's get a lot of this reverb in here. It's so over here, it's pretty much gone, but there's still a little bit here on the lower end here. So if we drag this back a little bit more. So now we can see the higher frequencies are starting to, starting to show up or hang around a little bit longer. And all the way to the left. It's pretty much kind of unrealistic that way because within reverberation, the higher frequencies tend to die out much quicker. That's just kind of a natural thing in sound. So you maybe want to double click this back to default because it's generally a good spot to have it in. Or maybe crank it up just a little bit more if you want something a little bit more soft. So pretty interesting over there. Next up, we have the decay. Now, this is the time it takes for the reverb to fade out. So if you want the reverb to hang out for a while, you know, maybe talk to you about your life, then maybe increase this knob a little bit here and have a new friend. Or if you want something kind of short and quick, like a merciful death, maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. 
totally up to you. And then last but not least, we have the size. So basically this is a simulation of how big the room is that we're putting our signal in, right? Because every sound needs to be in a certain space to kind of sound realistic to our ears. Now, the larger the value, the bigger simulation of a room that's gonna be, and the smaller is gonna be a smaller room. So we have something big, no kind of Taj Mahal kind of thing. Some more decay in there. Something kind of large like that, or if we want something kind of small, like a small little closet or something like that, maybe we want to, we want to increase our dampening and then drop down our decay or something like that. So this is a kind of effect where it sounds, it doesn't really sound like there's reverb on there, but there is, and it makes it sound a little bit more normal to us. So take a listen without this. It's very dry and kind of unrealistic. And with a little bit of reverb. So something kind of like that, if we wanted just a little bit of space to that. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the reverb. Now, time for the delay. Now, this is a very, very cool delay module because there's a lot of interesting stuff we can do with this here. So for our first demonstration here, we have the center volume and the side volume. So the way this works is we basically have a delay line for the center channel, and then we also have delay lines independently for the left and the right, which is very cool. And if that's confusing, stick with me. This will make a lot of sense, and it'll be really, really cool. So for this demonstration, let's just turn down our side volume right over here and then increase our center volume. So we have something kind of like this. A basic delay, right? Nothing too crazy. Okay, so basically based on this here, what we should actually do is let's go over to our pattern here. Let's remove all these drums. So we just have a click track, something like this. Now this is gonna make a lot more sense here if we have something kind of like that going on. Where is that kick coming from? Oh, there we is, still there. Okay, so now we have this center here. So bring the center volume up pretty substantially. So it's kind of annoying. So we really hear the, uh, the delays here and let's bring our feedback up so we have a lot of delays. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so right here we're in center here. And now this is basically going to be our time divisions. Now this isn't as fancy setup as far as a lot of synthesizers go, where it's like one over two, one over four, one over eight, one over 32, so on and so forth. This is set up a little bit differently here. And this is kind of where you have to use your ears and kind of just know the vibe of Diva, right? So if we're over here and we select two for our center, let's play this with the click track. Now, if we want to slow that down, let's go from two, let's go over here to four. Now, let's take a listen to that with a click track and let's hit a delay here. So if you notice, every time I hit a note or every click that we hear, that's where the delay is going to fall on. If we want to slow this down even more, let's go from four over here to eight, something kind of like this. And I'm sure you'll probably know what this is going to sound like. So now it's going to every other one. So now let's say let's double this up again and let's go over to 16. So basically what, what it should sound like is every beginning of a bar, we should hear a delay. So take a listen. And so on and so forth. So that's basically the way we are going to be changing the delay times for the... Uh, for the delay here. Now the cool part here is that we have the center knob, so this is gonna be our center ones, and we also have an independent one for the left and for the right. So the coolest part is when it comes like this. So now we have a four here in the center, and then the left is by default comes at two, and then the right also comes at four. So let's maybe bring this right one down to number two over here, and then let's increase the side volume to something kind of like that. Now let's take a listen to see what this sounds like. So it's kind of interesting the combinations that you can come up with. And if we had something kind of slow like this, is bring the side volume down a little bit and have the center volume pretty annoyingly loud. And now if we deviate from the right and the left, let's say maybe go to, for the two, let's go back to maybe four or 4.10, have a little bit of offset or even changes to maybe six. Now 
Now, this is kind of a cool concept here because let's say we kind of drag this cutoff down here a little bit like that, introduce maybe another oscillator. Let's go to our analog here, bring our sustain down and bring our decay down a little bit like this. Bring our low pass down a little bit, something like that. And then maybe if we add an arpeggio in here, something kind of like this. Maybe add some reverb into this here from our plate that we talked about just earlier. So those kind of delays can really make something kind of stand out like that. So as a recap over here, so we have our dry, so how much of our unprocessed signal that we want to hear. And then if we turn this all the way to the left, we're really just hearing the processed signal. So once we actually hit a note, we won't hear it. We're only going to hear the delays that comes after that. And as more as we sneak this in, we hear our actual raw signal and the delays from that. So something kind of interesting like that. So that's why I said this delay is very cool because you have independent control from the left, the center, and the right timing, and then the independent volume control of the center delays and the side delays. So that's kind of the main feature that I kind of wanted to drill in your minds a little bit here. So moving on from that, we have our standard high pass here. So if you want to remove some of these low frequencies in these delays and not have it sound so muddy, then you want to increase this here. And then the opposite is true for the low pass. You don't really want those high frequency content delays coming back at you because sound doesn't really work that way. The more something delays, the less high frequencies you're going to get back. So make sure to always kind of use this knob within reason. It's going to sound much more natural that way. And then feedback is, is going to control how many of these delays that we want. So if we have something kind of low like this, we're not going to have that many delays, but if we have something pretty annoying like this, it's going to be a lot of delay. So always be careful of this feedback here because this can get really messy really fast here. Now, the last one that you're probably looking at says wow, and we don't really see a wow knob on a uh, on a delay really. So let's go back to a new preset here, bring down these oscillator two and three. Let's bring something kind of up like this. Kind of bring this down. And for this, it's kind of interesting because we're also listening and then also looking at this graph here. And this is kind of going to be kind of a good demonstration. So within a, in a nutshell, the wow knob over here is going to emulate slow tape wobbling. And it's kind of cool, actually. So let's go to our delay. Let's turn this on here. And let's take a look at, at see how this wow sounds. So let's bring up our feedback and then uh, some of our center volume as opposed to our side volume. Okay, let's bring up more of our feedback here. Okay. So take a listen, and you, it might be hard to see on the screen, but we're going to kind of hear and see slight little wobbles in pitch from our delay. So let's turn this all the way to the right for maximum effect here. So they're kind of wobbly, kind of not really exactly straight lines as our notes first were. And it kind of just wobbles and just kind of sounds a little out of tune, kind of almost like a pitch shifting delay. So they always kind of have just that wobble that not really staying in tune. And then all the way to the left. It's kind of something that we're more so going to expect to hear. Then again, all the way to the right. So that's basically what the wow knob does. So. Kind of cool, a very little subtle effect, but definitely adds some character to the delay. So that was the plate reverb and the delay. So one of the, one of the really cool modules here. Kind of kind of a shame that we only have two effect slots. It would have been really cool if we had a couple extra more. But hey, if we have two, then we really have to pick which ones we actually like. So hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.